insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 116, Expressing Individuality. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my unique and independent co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. How about you? Doing all right. A little hot out there today. Yep. You said we were, what, at 96? 94. 94. We're at 94 outside. We're at... 76.6 in the studio right now, so thank God for air conditioning. Yep. So how was your week this week? This was your first full week out of school, right? I believe so, yes. Did you do anything interesting or exciting? I've been doing camps. Tell us about the camps real quick. Uh, One of the camps is Brain Games, where we kind of do questions um, and see images and various things to deal with strength- strengthening our brains. And this is through who? Uh, huh, uh, varsity Tutors. Varsity Tutors. And what was the other one you were doing? Uh, intro to Filmmaking, where we're going to be filming a two to five uh, minute long uh, movie. Okay. Like it so far? Yep. Cool. Cool. But that's not what we're talking about this week. Although it, no. I, your movie making really is a way of expressing your individuality. <laughs> this week we are talking about the importance of teen individuality and identity development. We'll talk about what teen identity development is, why it's important, and some of the consequences of underdeveloped teen identities. Then we'll explore some of the ways that teens display their self-identity issues before we finish up with tips on how parents can help their teens for a positive, form a positive self-identity. Before we do that, though, I would like to invite our audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find the audio version of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. You can find the video versions of all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. And we're pretty much any place you can get a podcast, Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, and so forth. I would also invite our audience to write in, give us some feedback. Uh, we're always looking for show ideas and, and you know, let us know whether we're doing a good job or not. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights, uh, at insights underscore things. We are at Facebook on facebook.com slash insights into things podcast and on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things or you can go to our website and get links to all those and much more at www.insightsintothings.com Ready to get started? Sure. All right. So what is teen identity? So this week's research we did from a site called aspiroadventure.com. They say identity refers to one sense of uh, one sense of as an individual and how they define themselves in terms of values, beliefs, and role in the world. Self-identity in adolescence forms the basis of our self-esteem later in life. A teen's identity is the result of various internal and external factors. Though a teen has some control over their identity development, teen teen identities are also formed by environmental forces outside their control, such as their peers, family members, the school they go to, their ethnic identity, and other social environments. 
Developmental psychologists advocate that teen identity development occurs in response to crises, crises and domains such as school relationships and values. Teen identity develops as teens try out different roles and attitudes in different settings. These settings may include home, school, and social atmospheres, which allows teens the the opportunity to explore their own values, belief systems, personal ethics, spir- spirituality, spirituality, sexuality, and gender. So uh, that's kind of a loose definition of, of the things that influence our identity and, and what our identity is. Of those, what do you think it has the most influence over your personal identity to date? Um... Let's see. Um, peers? Probably not, because as of late, I really haven't been interacting with a that, lot of that's my peers. True, yeah. So <laughs> we can cross that one off the list. <laughs> Family, I definitely think that you guys have definitely helped to me to shape my identity in a lot of various ways. Typically, with morals and everything, um, and what I should believe is right and wrong and su- and stuff like that. Um, school, I mean, school also pretty much is shaping, like, some of my interests and such, like, interests in certain subjects, and it probably did, and school probably did start getting me into these various um, hobbies that I do and the various subjects I like. Ethnic identity. Um, could you- You're Jewish. Do you identify with your Jewish ethnicity? Uh, yeah. So that's an influence as well. Um, and other social environments. So for other social environments, let's think of, uh, you know, the media or social media for that matter. Do you find that movies, television, uh, the internet, do any of those things have an influence over your personal identity? Probably, yeah. Um, some of the hobbies I have learned about have come from social media, so and some of my values even have come from that, like well, movies and such. One of the most important questions I think teens have to ask is, are you comfortable with your identity? Are you comfortable with who you are and, and the personality that you have now? Probably, yeah. There are definitely some things I wish could be kind of different, but for now, I'm pretty much okay with how my identity is so far. Have you changed a lot over the years? And if you have, is there a stage at which you've noticed these changes occur? Like, was it, did it synchronize with when you were changing schools or changing grades or, or did puberty make you change? Like, what were some of the impactful things that you've encountered that kind of changed your identity? A lot of what changed my identity was probably when I started going through puberty, which was when a lot of my emotions started getting kicked in the high gear. When I became a young teenager, I started kind of being this emotional wreck at times. Every day would seem like a bad day, and whatever day didn't have problems was like the greatest day ever. And I went to extremes a lot more then, um, and it didn't take until the podcast and maybe a bit more growing up to finally learn how to keep my emotions intact and be more emotionally mature. Okay, well, that makes a lot of sense. Has changing schools, because I know changing schools, you know, you've changed schools about three times now, right? Has changing schools, in addition to causing the natural anxiety, has it changed your personality? Uh, let's see. Um, so switching from my, so going to my elementary school, um, I don't know if like that had entirely switched my personality in elementary school. I did learn um, a lot of was when I was starting to build up my identity. Um, in when I switched to middle school, I was learning. I was probably learning more about 
other ways that I needed to, that I was going to work with my identity, um, and it kind of surfaced there, and with mid, and with going into high school now, well, we'll see what really happens and how my identity changes from that, which it will probably change a decent amount. Yeah, it probably will. And the last question that I have is, are you comfortable with your identity now? One of the, one of the, you know, biggest things people attribute to identity, you know, individual identity is what your aspirations are, what you want to do, you know, the cliche, what do you want to do when you grow up? Do you have kind of an idea of what you want to do, what kind of field you want to work in, what kind of life you want to have? Do you have a path forward at this point in time, or is that kind of still up in the air? Which, it's fine either way. I'm just curious how well defined that aspect of your identity is at this point. I have kind of a rough sketch of what I think I want my future to be like. I definitely don't think everything's for certain. A lot of things can change. Um, I have an idea of possibly where I think I'll be in my life later on, uh, but I'm still not entirely sure. And how much of that's been influenced by school? You know, we had some big decisions to make going into high school. What classes to take? Were we going to do the academies? Were we going to do any extracurricular stuff? Have any of those school-based decisions had an influence over your identity? A lot of them um, were probably very career-based, like deciding on what field I was going to work in and stuff like that, and even if I wanted to do like a second job, like just something for entertainment, like being an author per se. Um, a lot of the choices I made, um, go I made while I'm going into high school are probably going to shape, in a way, kind of guide me in my future, I think. Okay, that makes sense. I think we kind of have a, a good idea of what we're talking about when we're talking about our our individuality and our identity now. Let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about why is teen identity development so important. We'll be right back. For over seven years... The Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about teens expressing their individuality. So why is teen identity development important? Identity formation in teens is about developing a strong sense of self, of personality, connection to others, and individuality. Therefore, a positive teen self-identity is vital because it shapes a teen's perception of belonging not just for their teen years, but for most of their adult life. In addition, a positive self-identity is correlated with higher self-esteem. Positive reinforcement of effort, good choices, and the perseverance from parents can help adolescents develop a strong sense of self. So, some of the consequences... So now we should probably discuss some of the consequences of underdeveloped identity for te in teens. Okay. 
The importance of identity development for teens is huge. The development of a confident and stable sense of self is one of the key tasks of being a teenager. The teenage years are usually the first time an individual begins thinking about how their identity may affect their future and their life. The results in many teens becoming extremely self-conscious about themselves and the way others see them and can result in in a self-discovery and experimental stage. Psychologists argue that if a teen does not establish what their personal beliefs and values are, then they'll have an identity crisis. They believe identity development is a key process for teens and that a failure to establish identity leads to role confusion and a weak sense of self later. Some teens are able to learn to develop and discover their identity in a healthy and age-appropriate way. However, other teens, the time of identity for me, however, for other teens, the time of identity formation results in participation in risky and promiscuous behaviors that could potentially have a negative and lasting effect on their lives. Participation in harmful and inappropriate behavior can be very concerning for parents or of troubled teens. It's important for parents of troubled teens to remember that all teens can become healthy and happy once again with proper treatment. So, and I think that last part is probably one of the most important things for you because a lot of the activities that they're referring to are things that are probably going to happen over the next four years. So a lot of that happens in high school. Your social um, habits change. Your circles that you uh, socialize with will change dramatically. And I think you've kind of already seen some of that with your uh, participation in marching band, haven't you? Kind of, yeah. So I think the next four years are really where some of the words of wisdom and some of the uh, cautionary tales are going to have more of an impact than they have up until this point. Because I think you're going to have a lot more opportunity to explore your self-identity. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that? I would agree with you because when you're a teen, a lot of, well, when you're in high school, a lot of things can happen. A lot of opportunities are open up to you and you more or less start to question um, more things. And I definitely think that if you're not careful, you can spread your identity to places that, they probably, that it probably shouldn't be. So I agree with you. So do you think you've had the freedom at this point, uh, up until this point, to explore your own identity and develop your own identity uh, where you know, mommy and daddy haven't been overbearing about it, uh, but you've had that freedom to do it as you want to and figure out who you are and who you want to be? Do you think you've had that? Yeah, I've definitely had that with, you know, the influence even with the influences, I was able to come up with my own identity and, uh, you know, develop my own personality, things I liked, things I disliked, and my overall sense of being, I guess. Now, do you think the self-identity, uh, the identity that you've developed to this point, has it helped you to develop more self-assurance, self-confidence? Uh, has it helped to guide you? Has it, has it been a hindrance to you? Do you want to change things? What's your overall idea of how your current sense of self-identity helps you or serves you? Um, I definitely think a lot of my hobbies um, in particular um, have definitely helped me in a lot of instances. And um, knowing that I can, and knowing the accomplishments I've been able to do with my identity, um, and have done with my identity has definitely helped with my self-confidence. Um, well, I definitely think parts of my identity still kind of don't entirely fix that or help it. Um, I definitely think that for the most part, I'm pretty good as it is. How do you think your identity has changed frequently? Has it changed gradually? Has it changed dramatically? Like, do you feel you're a different person now than you were five years ago? Uh, thinking about it five years ago, I would probably be in, I would have probably been in fifth grade. Math is hard. <laughs> um, in fifth grade, I definitely will say, um, the maturity has definitely happened, um, 
I'm assuming... I don't know if it was instantaneously because... Well, it was kind of instantaneously because the first... The, like, first two-thirds of sixth grade were just an emotional baggage for me. And, like, the last third, I, like, was extremely mature. And I definitely think the whole maturity thing kind of happened instantaneously in some way. Like, one day I'm, like, after, like, after one day, I just, like, I'm just an emotional package. I like, just had a really bad day, and then the next day I realized, oh, wait, I know how to fix this, and that was kind of where it started. Yeah. Um, now, do you, are you satisfied with the progress you've made and who you're becoming, or do you look at who you are now and and think that there's a long road ahead to get to where I want to be? How, how confident are you in who you are today? I'm very confident in how I am today. Um... I definitely don't think that I have a long way to go to find myself. In certain instances, yes, I do think I have a long way to go. Um, But for now, um, I can just stick with who I am. Um, And I don't really need to make any huge decisions on it right now. So how about your friends? I know you haven't had much opportunity to socialize with a lot of your friends because of the pandemic. But how do you think their identity development has been? Do you think they've had uh, the same freedoms you have and the same support that you've had? Do you think that they're confident in who they're developing? Because I know a number of your friends are younger than you, so they might not reach the same stages that you've reached already. But do you see them kind of progressing along the same lines as you? or Kind of, yeah, because my friends kind of went through the same thing I went through at their age when they had a lot of emotional problems going on and I kind of acted as support for them. But later on, they actually started learning how to control their emotions a bit more. So with that, I definitely think so. Um, and I definitely think that they're also developing um, their they actually might be developing themselves a little faster than I was. So, you know, yay for them. (laughs) Good for them, yeah. So let's talk briefly about challenges. What are some of the challenges that you face in developing your identity and asserting yourself and and moving in the direction that you want to go? Are there challenges? What are some of the biggest ones that you have? And, And what's your technique for overcoming some of those challenges? Uh, some of the challenges that come with, I suppose, my identity is maybe, like, ro- um, I guess just my own indecisiveness and just my own I really don't know what to do or just my unknowing of it and really not having much experience or idea of how I wanted to go. A lot of it kind of has to do with, well... The biggest example I can think of is probably my sexuality. I really don't know at this point. Um, I know there are certain things I'm not, and there's certain things I might be, but I can't really put a word for it. Um, I have other examples, um, but that's probably the biggest one that comes to mind. It's probably just the fact that I really haven't experienced, like, you know anything that would really influence my sexuality all that much. And I've kind of been, I'm still kind of deciding, and it's just because I don't know, and it's one of the things that I'm like, I'll just wait and let it happen over time, I guess. And that's that's usually the safest thing when it comes to that. When it happens, it happens. It's not one of those things that you want to obsess over or focus too much on because you don't want to uh, impose a false scenario on yourself, right? So if it happens, it happens. You've not had a lot of uh, opportunities to engage in any kind of uh, romantic or or intimate discussions or relationships or anything like that, largely due to the pandemic, since you're not seeing anyone. Yeah. Um, like physically not, like being in contact with anyone yeah. makes that very difficult. Uh, I had a I had a conversation not too long ago with a coworker who's single, and uh, you know prior to the pandemic he he was dating you know he tried a couple of dating sites and stuff like that, and I had asked him how that was 
affecting his his social life in the pandemic. And uh, there were a lot more challenges than I thought because there were some people that, that didn't take the pandemic seriously. And we, we kind of talked about that in the past. But a lot of times you have to change your techniques. You know, there was a lot of video dating. There was a lot of dating in, in the virtual world and stuff like that. And it's really hard to get to know someone when you do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so with the world starting to get back to normal, with you going physically back into a school environment now and with you being part of different social groups, you know, your, your marching band is going to be a social group. There's going to be people there you're going to socialize with. I think you're going to find that getting to know people again will offer opportunities for you to exercise your social skills. Um, so it's not even about, the ability to interact romantically or intimately with someone. It's just, you need to learn how to interact with people again in general. You know, people have been cooped up for over a year now. And it's it, when you don't have a conversation face to face with people for months at a time, that's a skill that you kind of need to exercise again. Yeah. But it sounds like for the most part, you're pretty confident in who you are at this point in time. Would you agree with that? Yeah. A lot of things I do, um, understand about myself. I understand a lot of what my personality offers. I understand a lot of my hobbies and dislikes offer. And for the most part, I have a pretty good self-identity. There are those few things that I really am not sure of or aren't aware of at this point, but they're probably things that don't matter right now, and I can probably find them out later on. Right. Now, are there traits personality traits or identity traits that you see in others that you would want to emulate in yourself? And like, are you, are you looking at others as examples of uh, the type of identity that you want to adopt yourself? Or are you genuinely you from the ground up and you made yourself in the image you want or, or are you emulating others? Well, the one thing I wit, the one trait I do kind of wish I had, and I've kind of mentioned this to you um, before, not really, on, I don't know if I've mentioned it on the podcast, I probably have, but um, I kind of want mommy's ability to be social, because after being stuck at home for over a year, like, even though I wasn't really social to begin with, I really am having trouble being able to socialize with people. I get, like, Despite the fact I'm fully vaccinated, and most people are probably fully vaccinated, I get nervous around people, and I'm feeling a lot more introverted than I have in a really long than than I have before the pandemic. So, yes, mommy is a an an extrovert to the extreme. I think she could, much like my mom. You know, my mom would she didn't engage in conversations with people like mommy does. But my mom was the type of person who could go sit in a park somewhere and people would just walk up to her and start conversations. Mommy's the type of person who could strike up a conversation with anybody and hold her own on, you know, on just about any subject. Um, and and I, I can talk to people, you know, I don't like to. Yeah, like, and that's the thing, like. If like if you're able to get me talking about a subject, I will talk about it. I can talk to people. It's just starting the conversation and keeping it going is what I have the trouble with. Yeah, yeah, and and, and mommy's just a very friendly, outgoing individual. Um, it helps that she's very cute too, so that you know she doesn't scare people off. I think part of my problem is I, I scare people off. You know, I I look like an ogre. Um, you know, I was telling you before, there was a situation where mommy and I had actually gone out to um, kind of a social event. It was a, a Disney event we went to. It was for her D23 fan club thing. And, and it was a packed stadium, uh, packed, not stadium, but like a lecture hall at a college. And they were doing demos. And before they started, everyone, you know, filed in, found the seat and, and, we were sitting on the far side, so our row butted up against the wall, and I was on the end because I needed the leg room, and Mommy was next to me, and the rest of the entire row was open, and every other seat in the place was taken to the point that it was standing room only, and people would walk up the aisle, look at me, look at the seats, and keep on walking, <sighs> and there was probably 
15 people standing behind me because people were, I don't know, intimidated or terrified to ask me to get up so that they could, they could sit in that row. Um, so I don't have that problem that, that my mom had where people just come up and talk to me. And, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that I can be intimidating to people. Uh, and mommy doesn't have that. Mommy is, is, is probably the least intimidating person, most inviting person, uh, in a social environment that I know of. So that's a great skill to have because it's a great icebreaker, you know, the ability to to walk up to someone and just start a conversation. So that's definitely a worthwhile identity trait to try to master. I can't help you with that because I don't have it. Yeah, and that's like the one thing that I also think that kids kind of have when they're younger because there have been plenty of instances where like I was like on a playground or near a playground and kids just came up to me and asked me if they wanted to play. Like, well, you just <laughs> had that happen at the Renaissance Fair that we went to. Yeah, and that's the one thing. Like, I'm a mix between you and mommy. Like, you don't have any social skills, but people don't want to talk to you. Mommy has social skills and people want to talk to her. I don't have social skills, but people want to talk to me. <laughs> so I basically am like, I probably got the worst. <laughs> you are definitely our daughter. I don't, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that was all we had on, on that segment there. We're going to take another quick break, take our last break. We'll come back and we'll talk about some of the common ways teens display their self identity. And then we'll also talk about how parents can help their teenager form a positive self-identity. We'll be right back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we are talking about expressing individuality. And right now we're going to talk about common ways teens display their self-identity, their self-identity issues. As a way to navigate the stress and confusion that comes with identity development, some teens turn to outside signs and symbols to help them define their identity. A professor of psychology developed the five most common ways in which teens demonstrate their struggles with identity. So the first one is seeking status symbols. This includes clothing and possessions to create a sense of positive affiliation. Um, the next thing we have here is forbidden grown-up behaviors. Some teens be believe that appearing mature will, will bring acceptance, so they begin engaging in behaviors such as drinking, smoking, drinking, drugs, and sexual activity. The next one we talk about is rebellion. Many teens use rebellion as a way to show that they're different from their parents and to be accepted by their peers. The next one we have is idols. Some teens may identify with a famous person as a result, and as a result, try to become like that person. And as a result, they lose hold of their own identity. And the final one we have is cliques. Teens who are forming their identity will often form cliques because they do not want to be associated with anyone with undesirable characteristics. So, okay, let's, let's explore these and see if you've experienced any of these. So let's talk about seeking status symbols. So this includes clothing, possessions, etc. So do you have status symbols? Do you have materialistic things? Um, some people cling to technology. Some people cling to jewelry. 
Do you have any types of things like that that you cling to to try to establish an identity? Um, I think technology would probably be one because a lot of my identity, specifically my art identity, can kind of come out in technology. Um, so that would probably be one of the major ones. Um, I don't really think jewelry is anything because I really don't wear any jewelry. Um, so technology would be your, your status symbol. Yeah, probably. So what about forbidden grown up? And I do that in air quotes, grown up behaviors here. They talk about some of the more undesirable ones like smoking, drinking, drugs, and so forth. But there's other things where you can try to portray yourself mature, the way that you dress, the way that you treat other people. Do you try to appear more mature to use that to sort of influence your identity? Um, I don't think I really dress mature, uh, considering... The t-shirt logos I sometimes wear, like the I'm not lis- yeah, I'm totally listening shirt. Um, so I don't think that aspect, um, is it. But, uh, with my personality, I do at least try to appear mature because I think that is kind of part of my identity. I don't do it in the bad ways, like doing these grown-up behaviors. Um, I just have- I just express mature personality and I can relate myself to, um, and I seem to be, you know, decently mature for being 14. Okay, fair enough. How about rebellion? I was never much of a rebel myself. I, I kind of was a, you know, do what my parents say. My parents kind of gave me all the freedom that I needed. There was no need for me to rebel. Do you think you rebel? Do you do you do the anti-parent thing to to express yourself and to and to be individualistic? I don't think I've gone to that, and you guys have actually been afraid of me going there, where like I would re- well like you know just ignore you and such. Um, I haven't really been rebellious in any sense. Like I don't really go against your authority. Um, in any real way, um, I mostly have, like, we have playful arguments, but that's really not an act of rebellion, I don't think. It's really... No, no, not at all. Yeah, so I really am not a rebellious kid. You really, you don't actually give me much reason to be rebellious anyway. Well, that's good to know. So, idols. So, we, we tried to do a podcast on role models and idols and, and... It didn't work very well at the time because you didn't have any. Like you, you didn't look to like <laughs> celebrities or athletes or um, musicians or anything as as idols. So I'm pretty sure it still doesn't apply to you. But how do you think the the today's media treats celebrities and how those celebrities influence teens' identities? I mean, celebrities probably do have a pretty big influence on a lot of teens' lives, specifically sports players and so forth. Um, And I think some celebrities are okay to be idolized and others not. And um, like they said here, sometimes idolizing idolizing people to an extent makes you lose your own self-identity and the whole reason on why you were idolizing them. Um, and as long, and I'd say as long as that doesn't happen and you still, like, develop your own identity, I think it's all right to idolize the good kinds of people and celebrities and such. So what about cliques? I don't think you've uh, ever really been in a clique as, the, as they're traditionally labeled. You've had some friends you know, you, you had a group of friends that you hung around with, but they weren't very cliquish from, from what I could see. Um, going into high school and being part of marching band, marching band by its very nature is a click. Mm-hmm. How do you think that's going to affect your personality? And how do you think cliques in general affect teens' identity development? I definitely think that cliques can um, identify it by being one of the biggest influencers for it because um, 
a lot of cliques, a lot of people with cliques have, well, very similar personality traits. Um, and I definitely think that cliques is probably one of the other social things that um, a lot of teens can take influence from and also express themselves. Um, for being in marching band, I might I probably might become a lot, um, I definitely think marching band will probably change my personality, um, in certain ways, like, with fair, like, it'll probably teach me, like, how to react to certain scenarios, like, with regular band, um, it changed me by, like, realizing the beats and songs and also noticing, like, the various instruments and more or less, more or less not really, and kind of changed how I felt about songs. I didn't really focus on the lyrics as much as I did with the rhythm and beat. Right. So I definitely think that it definitely changed my perspective of music. Marching band is a lot more physical, so it might influence um, certain aspects of how I move and such i'm not entirely sore so okay we'll kind of just see how that goes okay again it's important to keep in mind there's a variety of ways that teens experience identity formation and keep in mind some experiences are more harmful than others so parents kind of have to keep an eye on that mm -hmm. uh, what other tips do we have for for our parents out there okay so parents are, so parents are very important are very important in terms of teen, teen identity development. Studies show teens with close relationships with their parents have lower rates of experimentation with drugs and risky sexual behaviors. For your teen, the process of teen identity development can be a stressful time and can lead to one feeling overwhelmed and unsure. Providing a child with a caring and accepting adult influence, whether you are a parent, relative, or teacher, is critical in securing a healthy identity development. Simply spending time with your troubled teen is one of the most important roles you can play in their life. The con consistent. consistent and caring influence and presence of adults in an adolescent's life is one of the best ways to assure a seamless transition to adulthood. Parents can help their troubled teen develop a positive self-identity in the following ways. Model healthy lifestyle habits and skills to manage stress. Teach healthy ways to handle life's disappointments. Avoid making comparisons between your teen and others. Give your teen compliments or positive reinforcement. Encourage and promote healthy sleep habits for your teen. And hold boundaries with your teen or with your child while communicating love for them as a person. When parents have exhausted all the above methods, you know, you can still continue to see your teen struggle and uh, forming their identity. And it might be time to seek professional help. We're not professionals here, nor do we pretend to be. Yeah. Uh, we try to take things as realistic and down to earth as possible. Hence why I have my subject matter expert here with me. Yeah. So let's explore these for, for a little bit here. So one of the things they do talk about is forming close relationships with your parents. Do you think you have a close relationship with mommy and daddy? Yeah, definitely. Considering the fact that I've started, you know, quoting songs and started quoting commercials and funny, you know, phrases with you and have pretty much become geeks like you guys has probably shown that we probably have a really close relationship. Nice. They also talk about that the process of teen identity development can be stressful and overwhelming. Have you ever felt overwhelmed at who you are and how your identity is developing? Has it ever, has it just been a natural process or is it something you've consciously thought about? Well, a Probably especially when I started learning that there were more ways to express my identity is kind of when I started feeling a bit overwhelmed. Um, and um, a lot of that kind of had to do with me really not knowing a lot about it, like I've mentioned before, and as well as it being completely new. And you know, the variety of choices having for my identity can kind of be overwhelming at times. So, um, 
While I definitely have built a firm identity over time, it did take some time for me to realize all of it. Fair point. I think really the, the important thing to keep in mind is that teen identity is, is very important, and it's not just something that gets you through your teenage years. It's something that stays with you for the rest of your life. And I think it's important that parents contribute to that any way they can by supporting their teens. Yep. Uh, I think that was pretty much all we had, right? I think so. I think we'll take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll get your closing thoughts. All righty. All right. Be right back. Go for your closing remarks. So to everyone out there, I just wanted to express again how important it is for teens to express their individuality and, well, express what they want their identity to be. Um, parents have a big influence on this, and it's basically the parent's job to make sure that as long that your teen is developing a safe and good identity. I definitely don't think you should shape your teen in the way that you want them to be, and I definitely think you should allow them to be who they want, but if what they're doing to express their individuality is something that is unpositive, I definitely think the parents need to intervene with that, and just know that your teen can um, be well with it, and can get better, and it just takes a few and it just takes a few tries to get it right. Sage advice as always. Thank you. That was it for today's topic. Before we go, I do want to invite folks once again to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video versions of the podcast can be found listed as Insights into Teens. And we're available anywhere you can get a podcast, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, etc., etc. I would also invite everyone to uh, reach out to us, give us your feedback, give us some show suggestions. We're always looking for new ideas. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insightsintothings. We do stream five days a week on Twitch and YouTube. On Twitch, you can find us at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Uh, If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a free monthly Twitch Prime subscription. We'd appreciate you throwing that our way. Audio versions of this podcast can be found on the web at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We are on Instagram at Instagram.com slash Insights Into Things, or you can get everything else on our website at www.insightsintothings.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights Into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights Into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Excellent. I think that's it. I didn't screw up this week, right? Yeah, you didn't. I think we went pretty error-free this week, didn't we? Yeah, pretty much. That never happens. Really? (laughs) That's it for this week. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.